Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to learn how to make a frequency table, and then from that frequency table, how to turn it into a histogram. Let's get started. Okay, today we're going to talk about frequency tables and histograms. We're going to start off with frequency tables. So a frequency table is just a table uh, that organizes your data into intervals, and intervals that are the same size. So let's look at our first example and learn how to make a frequency table. Okay, here's example one. Make a frequency table showing the shoe sizes uh, of the students in the class. So here's my data for their shoe sizes. Uh, it's already in order, so that's very nice. So let's get started on the frequency table. Now, a frequency table is very simple. It's just two rows. The top row is about your data, whatever your data is about. So in our case, it's shoe sizes. On the bottom is always going to be frequency. Second step is to decide what you want to make your intervals. You typically want to be around four or five intervals. Uh, unless you have a, a whole lot of data and then you can you can use you'll probably use more intervals than that um, But if you only break it up into Two intervals. Well, that's not going to look very good for your for your histogram. So I'm going from four all the way up to ten So I think I'm going to go for my intervals by two. So I'm going to go from four to six uh, for my first interval now your teacher uh, or your book might show you something like this. So four to six, then uh, seven to nine, 10 to 13. And that can work as long as you have integers for your data. But if you notice, well, if I go from four to six and then seven to nine, well, what about a six and a half? There's a six and a half. That would have no place to go. So. Instead, you would do it like this, four to six. This one would be six to eight, eight to 10, and 10 to 12. So notice there, there are no gaps. So even if we have decimals, uh, there'll be a place for them. So now, all I need to do is find out the frequency of my data values in each of these intervals. So I just count. So let's see, from four to six, how many students had shoe sizes between four and six? Well, here's one, four, two, three, four. Now here's a six. Now the question is, do I put this six, do I count it here or do I count it here? And you have to have a rule because you don't want to count them, you don't want to count that six twice. So the rule is you include the value on the left. So you should probably write this down. Include the left, not the right. And if you follow that rule, you'll be fine. So this six, I'm not going to include it here, right? This basically is from four all the way up, right up to six, not including six. So one, two, three, four. There were four for uh, students that had a size in that interval. Okay. Now, six, six to eight. Here, I include the value on the left, so I'm including that six. So here's that six. There's one, two, three, four, five. I'm not including that eight, so I've got five here, right? Do you see that? Now here, again, include the value on the left, not the right. So I include the eight in this interval, not the 10. So there's one, two, right? I don't include the 10, and then this 10 is included here. So just one, okay? Now, always, always, always double check to make sure you didn't miss any or, or um, include some numbers twice, and we can do that by just adding. So that's nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, right? So I should have 12 values here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and I'm good. Now, for part B, we're going to learn how to turn this into a histogram. Okay, part B, make a histogram using the frequency table. And it's pretty simple. Uh, first step, draw your axes and label them. So 
I'm going to start like that. And sorry, that's not perfect. Um, shoe sizes, whatever you have on top, that's always going to go uh, on your x-axis, which means my y-axis then is labeled frequency. You got that labeled? Now we need to figure out, well, what do I want to be counting by? Uh, well, frequency, I go from one all the way up to five, so we can easily just count by ones. Shoe size, we use the exact same intervals that you have here. Okay, so there's no, you don't have to think it, about it at all. Um, so the first one, we're starting at four. So I'm going to put a four here, and that's going to go to six. So I put a six there. Okay, I don't need to do this. I don't need to do four to six. Okay, there are no gaps. So I'm just going to go four, six. Here would be eight. So from here to here represents six to eight. Uh, Ten, and finally... 12. So I've got all that ready. Now I'm ready to draw my bars. And the bars of my histogram, the height is whatever you had for the frequency, right? So from 4 to 6, that interval, I had a frequency of 4. So from here to here, all the way up to 4, draw a bar. The difference with histograms and bar graphs, it looks very similar to a bar graph, but there should be no gaps. Okay, so now here, six to eight, the frequency was five. So six to eight is up to five. Just like that. Notice they're touching. That's what it should look like um, for a histogram. Eight to 10, frequency of eight to 10 had a frequency of two. So that is right about there. And finally, from 10 to 12, the frequency was only 1. And that's going to be just like that. Okay. Um, finally, I'll add a little uh, title at the top. You don't need a key for a histogram. So I'll just say for the title, students, shoe size. Here's one to try on your own. Okay, example two, instead of making a histogram, we're going to learn how to use one to answer three questions. So here is our uh, histogram. It's about the winning speeds at the Daytona 500. So first question, A, which interval contains the most data values? So if you look at our histogram here, uh, remember the most amount of data values will be the bar that is the highest, the tallest. So if you look over here, which one is it? Well, you can see that it is the interval of 150 to 159 miles per hour. Uh, most of the winning speeds for the Daytona 500 were within uh, that interval. Okay, and part B, how many of the winning speeds are less than 140 miles per hour? So if we look, let's see, for 120 to 129 miles per hour, in that interval, there was only one winning speed. It was in that. It's pretty slow for the Daytona 500. Uh, and then let's see, from 130 to 139, in that interval, let's see, there were four, four winning speeds in that interval. And let's see, one plus four, that would give us five total winning speeds that were less than 140 uh, miles per hour. And finally, part C. How many of the winning speeds are at least 160 miles per hour? So let's look. Well, from at least means 160 or greater, right? So at 160 to 169, that interval, there were seven. Seven speeds in that interval, seven winning speeds in that interval. And then from 170 to 179 miles per hour, there were five. So we add those up, 7 and 5 would give us 12. So there were 12 total speeds that were at least 160 miles per hour uh, that won the Daytona 500. Now, before you get to the on your own, if you notice this histogram, you'll notice it's not like the one we did in example 1. Um, right? We go from 150 to 159, 160 to 169. Uh, they're not exactly the same number. And that's because all our values were whole numbers. They were all integers. 
Okay, we didn't have any like 159.5 miles per hour because if we did, then would we'd be kind of stuck. We it would fall in between those two intervals. So if you have all whole numbers, then this type of histogram will work fine. But if not, like shoe sizes, if you got decimals, you got to be careful and do what we did in example one. Okay, here's one to try on your own. Finally, in example three, we're talking about the shapes of distributions. Now, we use this when we have dot plots or histograms. We can describe the shape that the histogram or dot plot makes. Um, so I've got four examples. This first one, if you notice, you have most of your data here on the right side, and it's kind of going down to the left. So we call that skewed left. Okay. We would describe the shape of this distribution skewed left. It's going down to the left. Down here, we call that the tail of the distribution. Okay. So when you're thinking of it, you look, where's most of my data and where is very few of my data? And that's the direction you're, you're going towards where there's the few, uh, where there's the little few amount of data values. Okay. The next one. Well, here you notice it's pretty even, right? Left side and the right side, very uh, similar. We call this, this is symmetric. Okay, it's got symmetry. So the name of that distribution is symmetric. Okay, and this last one, well, if this was skewed left, you notice here, here we have most of our data on the left side and it's going down to the right side, which means it is skewed right. Okay, we would call that distribution skewed right. And finally, well, what if you have one where it's pretty much flat? Um, this we would call it's uniform, or you could also just call it flat, flat distribution. Okay, so those are the shapes of distributions. Here's one to try on your own. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.